Good evening, everybody. Sorry to make you wait. How are you? Baruch Hashem, thank you. Good evening, Rabbi. Thank you. All right, here we go. Uh -huh. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to the next chapter. Let's go for that. Uh, so we're going into something that we already touched on, but now we're going to get into it more comprehensive. Yeah, so since you're on the tour, <clears throat> מותר לומר לכן ואני ישראל תן לי ביצים או אגוזים או על הרועה הרגיל אצלו תן לי גדי או טלה uh, ולטבח תן לי <coughs> כתף <coughs> או ירך <coughs> ונחתום <coughs> תן לי כיכר וכן ואני <coughs> תן לי הביצים ויהיו דרימונים so, okay, what are we talking about here? We're talking about making purchases on Yom Tov. Right? Um, so, the merchant is a Jew, and you're telling him like this, right? Give me some eggs, give me some uh, right, uh, nuts, give me some... Uh, give me uh, an animal, right? A uh, goat. <clears throat> <clears throat> or a lamb, or right, uh, you tell the uh, butcher, give me you know some shoulder meat, right, or whatever, right, thigh, or you tell the baker, give me a loaf of bread, <clears throat> things like this. So then he says, you, you tell the store owner, right, uh, you know the. Uh, Give me five eggs. Give me ten pomegranates. Go kill some Things like this, you know. But you shouldn't uh, right uh, ask for any some kind of a size, right? Um, in other words, tell him, you know, give me, you know, give me this amount, right? Give me a kilo. Give me a pound, right? Whatever. No, right. <clears throat> Something like that. And also, don't tell him, right, uh, he says, don't tell him, give me uh, $10 worth of meat, right? Uh, so, in other words, don't tell the store, don't, don't tell a guy in the store, yeah, you know, right, um, Give me ten dollars worth, and I'll pay you right. Uh, I'll pay you ten ten bucks. In other words, uh, tomorrow, right? <clears throat> Whatever. Velo, velo schum, right? Minyan, and also not a number, right? Lomar kach vekach yesh biadi teni kach vekach, like to say, right? Yeah, I have this amount of money, so give me this amount. 
and then I'll owe you, right? Whatever. Uh, I'll owe you this amount of money. <clears throat> okay, so that's right. That's pretty much the story there. So says the tour, right? Um, so by the way, right? What are we talking about here? Are we talking, as we said, right? The merchant is a goy. I'm um, sorry. The mer merchant is a Jew. So, what? What his store is open on Yom Tov? What? What's going on? <laughs> right. Uh, obviously, that's not the case, right? You're not allowed to open your store on Yom Tov. Uh, so, what are we talking about here? <clears throat> right. That he went to his house, you know, and he told them, you know, give me some merchandise. I mean, he's home. He's not at the store, obviously, right? <laughs> Okay. That's the idea. <clears throat> so, um, in those days, it was common, you know, that people used to sell from their house, you know, the merchandise. Yeah. And some people had a store also, you know, that was that was also, you know, that also existed. Okay, whatever it is. <clears throat> anyway, um, so what's the story, right? You're lacking merchandise, right? You need some food on Yom Tov. You know, you forgot to buy some things, right? Uh, the groceries. So you're allowed to purchase it, you know, but uh, there's a way to do it, you know. Uh, so as we said, you know, don't talk about money. Don't talk about measures, right? And don't talk about numbers, right? Uh, that you shouldn't do. <clears throat> okay, so then he goes on. That's talking about a Jewish right uh, merchant. Ah, so he says, right, when it comes to a goy, you're not allowed to buy something which right uh, is you know attached to the ground. In other words, that's the way it is, right? <clears throat> Why is that? Uh, maybe because it would maybe it was picked today. And also not something which is lacking trapping. Right? Uh, because maybe they were trapped today. And also not eggs, right? Uh, because uh, perhaps they were laid today. Right? But it says something which is not attached to the ground. Even it was brought today uh, from outside the boundary, it's allowed. Okay. Yeah. So, by the way, you can you can guess, you know, that nowadays, that when you go to the super, you know, whatever, you go to the deli or whatever, as a grocery store, you know, that merchandise was not picked today. It wasn't laid today, the eggs, right? It's been there for a while already. <laughs> so, we don't have really have that concern today, you know, in our stores, you know what I mean? Uh, so, we're talking about more the, uh, you know, the mom and pop style kind of thing, you know, in those days they had where, you know, they were like bringing fresh stuff and, you know, selling it. <clears throat> so even today you're going to find things like this you know uh, there are some people you know who have chickens in their backyard you know in their garage and uh, you know so they, they have like fresh eggs you know they're laid so we're not talking about that right that's a different issue but you know if you're talking about a super right or whatever then you know, obviously those eggs are not laid today that's for sure. Okay, <clears throat> so anyway, right, um, let's see the bit yourself here. So, yeah, it says brings with yourself, he brings a source for this, right? Where is this? The Mishnah, Besopek, and Sadin, right? Over there. And Betza. Chavtet and Mudalef. Mashkatab, Ole Ro'el, Argil, Etzot, Tenli, Gedi, Otale. That what he said, right? That you can also ask the shepherd for an animal. At Bright Tasham, it's a bright over there. Perish Rashi, Rashi explains, Haragil Etzlo, Shemitoch Hashir Agil Etzlo. So he says, right, this guy is, you know, he knows him, right? He knows the customer. So why is that important? Because since he knows him, right, uh, I mean, no, he believes him, right, trusts him, you know? So in other words, he'll give him merchandise without paying. You know, he knows he'll come back tomorrow and pay. 
So it's not a problem. Right? So in other words, not only you can't pay, but you can't right, but you can't even mention a price, you know, even that you can't do. So, you know, the store owner has to know that, right? He has to know the rules, the boundaries, right? And you work together with him, you know, to get the desired result. Okay. Um so it says, "Veda sheish b'divrei Rabenu tosefet shelo hayat zarich lichtov." So he says over here, the bit Yosef, right? He says the two wrote some things here, which are like superfluous. You know, it wasn't needed to write them. In other words, it's like you know, you could have understood it without that. <clears throat> so what are we talking about? Talo malachin vani teni betim that goes in, right? Like when he said, you know, you're allowed to tell the store guy, right? The guy in the store. Give me eggs, give me right the nuts. Kevan the Katav uh since he wrote afterwards, he said afterwards, you know, five eggs, Vasari Monim and ten uh red pomegranates. And so you know he wrote it like twice, you know, superfluous. Ella Mipne Shivimishna Shanino. So he says, um rather he says, We learned in the Mishnah, Omer Adam Lechenvani, ten li betzim vegozim. A person can say to the guy in the store. Right, uh, you know, the owner, whatever. Uh, give me eggs, give me nuts. <clears throat> right, so he says that you're allowed to tell him even the number, right? So why is that? Because that's the way it's done in this house. So first he says the tour, you know, started talking about, you know, store owner, and but he didn't mention any numbers. Because then he was, afterwards he was going to say, right, that it's five eggs, and ten pomegranates. <coughs> that which it says, right, that that's the way of the stoner owner to be. Uh, that's the way he does in his house he counts in his house the Ran explains so he says therefore right? it doesn't really it's not really so um, obvious or apparent that he's doing it for the price the money <clears throat> right? so he's not telling you the number because of the money that's involved the price Rather, he's doing it because uh, he just, you know, he wants a certain amount. Okay, so then it goes on. As we said, right? Don't mention the size, right? The, the measures. Sham b'brayta. So within the brayta, bilvad shelo yaskir lo schum mida. Rabbi Shimon ben Lazar Omer bilvad shelo yaskir lo schum mekach. Right. Uh, so we have two things there, right? One is that you shouldn't measure. You shouldn't mention the measure. Right, whatever the measure is, and also not the price. <clears throat> okay. Um Rabenu Hananel Gores. So he says Rabenu Hananel is uh, right, uh, he um he he, he 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 his text says like this Shelo Yaskir Lo Mekach. He shouldn't mention, as we said, right, the price of Bishimon Gamil Zaomer Bilbat Shelo Yaskir Lo Schum Minyan. And then he says the number, right? The the amount, right? The um, quantity. Uh, so the uh, Tosot they wrote the So they said, right? You should try to be careful about both of them, right? In other words, uh, they're both halacha, right? Don't mention uh, right the, the any any measure, and don't measure any prize. Price, I'm sorry, price. Don't measure any price. <clears throat> okay. So that's the story there.
Ben calls it Yafir Basiman Shin Chakiva. So he says, right, that this topic has already been covered in the laws of Shabbat, right? Uh, it's pretty much the same story. So, you know, like one, this this chapter supplements that chapter. Right? Uh, right? As we said, right, there is a slight difference between Shabbat and Yom Tov. What's the difference? That on Yom Tov, you can buy like an animal, you know, whatever, but on Shabbat, obviously, you're not going to be buying any animals. Right? Uh, so that's not going to be a part of it. And, you know, also, you're not going to be buying any raw meat, even though we said, right, that it is possible, uh, you know, raw meat is not really mukta on Shabbat, but obviously, you know, you're not going to be buying raw meat in order to, you know, to nibble on it or whatever, or to right, or to nibble it on Shabbat, or, you know, to, right, uh, what do you call it? to give it to your dog, right? Uh, yeah. That's not very common. So, <laughs> right, that's the story there. <clears throat> you never know, <laughs> but uh, it's not very common. Okay, so that's the story there. What else we got here? We got more. So it says, um, that's only when, it, when it's, we're talking about a Jew. But what about what about when it comes to a Goy, right? Then we said it's a little bit different. Right? You shouldn't uh, buy from him something which is attached to the ground. Perk and Sadin Katab Barosh says the Rosh, right? In this Perk, Katab Bahag, the Bahag says, that's only talking about a Jewish right, uh, merchant. But if it's a Goy, so then, right, you're limited to certain things, right? You shouldn't buy something that is attached to the ground or, you know, as we said, flour, right, because you can't grind it. <coughs> because you can, right, it could be that it was that flour was ground on Yom Tov. Right? Or let's say it came out of the boundaries, outside the boundary. And also when it comes to eggs, then maybe right that the eggs were laid today. Right, so you're not going to take these things from him. Right, like we said in the Gemara, that if a goy brings a gift to the Jew, if there's something there which is attached to the ground, and the karka asur, it's forbidden. Also, the same thing applies to something which uh, some forbidden labor was done to it. <clears throat> so you really shouldn't mention, he says, outside the boundary, to have a die shadow, because that's allowed, as we said, right? Already we mentioned that. Like it says in the Gemara, Eruvin Mema Mudalef, Gabel Lifta, right? The Ata Lemechoza. Regarding a certain produce that came to this town, but Perak Misha Otsiu, and also this Perak, right? Hanhu Dichre the Atu le le Mabarchata vechen Kemach Shenitchan Yom Tov Mai Sura Ika Kevan Deruba Goim Adata Deruba Techane Le. So it's also regarding you know the flower <coughs> that you know that that belongs to a goy. So it says it's not really a problem. Why? Because um, uh, called. He's not doing it for you, he's doing it for the majority, which is Goim. Okay. Like we said in Shabbat, says <coughs> also regarding Muksa, there's no prohibition here. Why? Because uh, wheat, right, can um, you know can be uh can be eaten raw as well. And also, it says you can make from them uh, some porridge, right? All kinds of, you know, or right, uh, all kinds of um, roasted items, you know, which don't need to be ground. <coughs> That's the end of it. Okay. So the Ran also says, right, name of the Bahag, this Brighter is talking about Jews only, Jewish merchants. When it comes to going, no. Because it says there that you can go right to the to the butcher, right, and tell him, uh, you know, the right, whatever, the uh, shepherd, give me a 
right? Uh, give me a bull. <laughs> right? One bull, right? Torechad, or gozalechad, right? Or some kind of a, a, a pigeon, whatever it is. Right? Ve'ilu begoy asu. So he says, when it comes to goy, this will be forbidden. Why is that? The chashin and shem itzod, because maybe right, we're concerned that we're concerned that maybe he, he trapped it today. Ve'chen kavar kikar. Also, he says, when it comes to uh, like loaf of bread or gruska, right? Uh, lo, the chashin well, also that you shouldn't do. Why? The chashin and shem yayom nitchanu achitim, because we're concerned, right, that he ground the wheat today, right? Uh, you know, and he made the bread, right? Today, nobody does that, you know. But in those days, right, that's the way it was. Um, so it says it's possible that even for a goy it's allowed, even with a goy. Bar mi perot, right? This is instead of except except fruits, that they're attached to the ground. But when it comes to the bird, <coughs> pigeon, so it says we're not really concerned that they were trapped today. because most of them are trapped. Right uh, beforehand. So it's also the eggs, you know, right? They're usually most of them are not, you know, laid that day, <laughs> right? Especially in our times. So therefore they're allowed. Because we go quite the majority, says there you go, right? Majority. The majority of the produce is not the right uh, picked, you know, on that day, right? Obviously. Or late that day, whatever it is. Okay, good. So then he goes on. That's what it's on Tosod. So it's different over here, but why? We go according to majority, but that was Matirin, right? Something which is going to be allowed tomorrow, right? The day after. Came on the Kaimalan since we hold that we hold that something like that doesn't get nullified even a thousand. So it says it could be that there it's different. Because the uh, prohibition has been established. So it says when it comes to bread though, there's really no concern. Because even if it was um, round today, because of Muktzeh, right? There's no problem with Muktzeh. Because these this wheat was already fitting to grind. So he says there's no prohibition here when it comes to labor, right? From the Torah. The Latorah Goy now said, why? Because it was done right uh, for a goy. <clears throat> That's the end of it. Okay. So we see, right, that these rabbis, you know, right, walk a tight wire over here, right? Uh, you know, to, uh, to describe the difference between this and that, right? All kinds of things. Whether it's a goy, whether it's a Jew, whether it's Shabbat, whether it's Yom Tov, right? A little bit different, these things. Okay, so that's the story there. And he goes on. So he says, uh, regarding eggs, right? He said that you're allowed to buy from a goy on Yom Tov. So he says that only applies when there is somebody, Legabe. Uh, uh, when when there's somebody who sells to him these eggs, right? But to go to their house to have a that's the kviut, right? In other words, that's the that's the, where, the place where the eggs are laid. Asu, it's forbidden. Why? Because over there you may find eggs which are hatched, which are right uh, laid that day. So he says, then, right, it's like 50-50 always. It's not considered to be a majority there, since it's fixed in a place. Right? He says, I already wrote this in this chapter, which is 513. So he says, I wrote the name of the poskim, that uh, right uh, in the, during the daytime you shouldn't buy eggs from a goy. I feel ate man de misban de gabe. Even if there's somebody who sells to him. <clears throat> wow. Okay. The Rav Magid says Rav Magid. Um, 
כתב פרק דלת, כדברי הראש של רבי ארן, היא פסקה לזה כדברי הראש של רבי ארן, לכן ואני הוא פתם ורואה שאמרו בין גויים בין ישראלים, right? So he says that these things are applied whether it's a Jew or a Goy, meaning what? The merchant, right? Uh, and uh, the shepherd and so forth and so on. And the, um, the spice guy. שאמרו בין גויים, בין ישראלים, הכל מותר, it's allowed, they, they allow, they say it's allowed whether it's a goy or a Jew. חוץ מדברים שיש במניין המחובר, unless it's something which is attached. או שיש לחוש שמן נצוד היום, or there's concern that it was trapped today. שאסור לתלום מן הגוי, so you're not allowed to buy that from a goy, אלא אם כן, unless, נסתלק הספק, unless the doubt has been removed, right? In other words, there's no doubt. Like we said, right, in a supermarket, you know, <laughs> obviously there's no doubt over there, right? That stuff has been sitting there for days. Uh, <laughs> right? So as we said, right, it's obvious, you know, when you know it's, you know, it's, not, uh, it's not fresh merchandise from today, right? You know it's not that. So then it's okay, it's fine. Uh, okay. So then he goes on, and Mordechai Kata Basob Pek En Tzadim says that Mordechai, Mashma Midir Agon, it implies from the words of the Gaon, the Kashen Nachush, the Mechubar, the Mokce Ashare. When we're not concerned about something attached to the ground, or Mokce, then it's allowed, the Mishka Lafilu Keneged Goy Aragil Etzlo. You can even buy from a Goy uh, that knows you. Ulechora Mashma Ken Meahid, the Garsin of Yeruvim. So he said that's why it's implied in Yeruvim, Mem Adam Amud Aleph. Right? Regarding this case in the Talmud, where some produce was brought to the town, this perk in Mem Zayn Amudbet, in Eruvim, regarding these uh, right, uh, rams, so it says, you see that it was brought by Goim, so it says you can push it out and say that it was a goy who said that before Yom Tov uh, should bring them. Um, they already made the price, right? Uh, they fixed the price. So the goyim were late. They didn't bring it to the Jewish merchant. Ad Yom Tov until Yom Tov. So he says the citizens of the town, they should have bought it in the presence of the Jew, from a Jew, but not from Goim. So he says, um, So he says, there's, uh, you know, two ways of looking at it, right? What to forbid or to, to permit. The Ravan Katab, they So Ravan, uh, Ravan says it's forbidden. Why is that? Because we're concerned that he's going to bring more for him. Why? Because he's accustomed to, 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 to sell to him. Okay. So, good. Let's go on. Let me just see how much we got here. Okay, maybe we can try to finish this, right? If we're lucky. All right, so let's see. So it says like this, right? Um, that Tosfot Katu Sham, so says Tosfot, you can go to the merchant, right? Whether he's a goy or Jew. So says Tosfot, right? We're only concerned about a goy if there is concern that this thing was attached to the ground or it was something which was, you know, uh, attached, uh, right? The laid today, the egg, whatever. <clears throat> so, but this rabbi says, right, that in his town, they ruled the rabbis there to forbid when it comes to a goy. But he says the rabbis in France were lenient. All right. So it says, even though it seems to me that, you know, we should be lenient, so he says, I'm stringent, he says, like the rabbis of our place. Right? Like it says in Yerushalmi, 
שלהי, בכל מערבין, אני אספרק, ראית, הלך לתת, אף על פי אין עירובין, שכתבו לכם סדר המועדות של אל תשנו ממנהג אבותיכם, נוחי נפש. Right, so it says over there in the Yerushalmi that don't, uh, you know, change a custom. In other words, if there's a certain custom in a town where you live, you know, even though you don't agree with it, don't try to, like, up with the custom, you know what I mean? Uh, they've been doing this for a while already, you know, you're coming now and making, playing games. Not right to do that. So what does that mean, right? We talked about this before, about customs, right, the issue of customs. So we're talking about a case where, you know, I call it... Um, Everybody in the town has this custom. You know, it's a uniform custom in the town. And, you know, it's not a mistaken custom, right? It's kosher. In other words, it's based on some real, you know, poskim, right? Some real rabbis who rule this way. So if that's the case, right, uh, then you shouldn't try to change it. Why, why, why change it, right? Don't do that. Um, we call it... Um, Yeah, well, I was going to say something, but whatever. Anyway, whatever it is, anyway, so the point is like this, right? That, um, yeah, so what I was going to say is like this, that you should only change a custom when, when, you know, it's not kosher custom, right? In other words, it's not a, it's not a proper according to halakha, you know? Let's say it's against the halakha, you know what I mean? So if that's the case, then you should change it. Should nullify it, but otherwise, you know, why change it, right? What, what do you, you know? You're just going to cause a big fight, you know, big, right? Uh, no good to do that. So then he goes on, right? Ulinian masse nire the makom shelona hagu isu mutar lekach afilu mechen vanigoi. So he says, but he says practically speaking, what should what should you do? Right, uh, that if there is no custom there to be stringent, right, then it should be allowed, no problem. Even if it's a goy, a merchant, right, called the varsh achila, any kind of food. Even though, right, shebe davar shehu shel goy lo sheach muksa. So even if it writes something which can be in theory muksa, but he says since it belongs to goy, right, there's no prohibition of muksa there. Even if it's known, right, it was brought from outside the boundary, it's still loud, he says. Why? Because it wasn't brought for a Jew, right? So in other words, whatever we learned last week, you know, that, uh, right, uh, you, should, you should be stringent about these kinds of things, right, uh, we're talking regarding the boundaries, uh, that's talking about a case where um, it was brought for Jews or the Jew, right, whatever. But here, it wasn't brought for Jews. It was just brought, you know, for the town dwellers, right? And, uh, you know, most of them are goyim, so we're not really concerned about that. That it was brought for Jews. Okay. But it says, but if there's concern, right, that this thing was picked today, or right to laid today, right? Things like this, right? Then we should be stringent. That's something else. Or it was trapped today. That's a different story. <clears throat> so then he goes on. What about buying, you know, hot bread from a goy, right? Are you allowed to do that? Fresh bread? Right? So says to a right? It's no problem, really. You know, in other words, you can buy a loaf of bread that was baked uh, by a goy on Yom Tov. It, uh, why is that? Uh, right? So he says, we can't really forbid this because maybe the wood, you know, was detached from the ground, right, that they used. To bake the bread. Ayom umuksim and their muksa. The ma bechach says, "What do I care?" Ha pirish ri 
because we explained the law minan yesh shevach etzim pepat. So he says because we don't really say right that the bread is considered to be a product of the wood. That's only regarding the prohibition of uh, having benefit. And if you're going to tell me it's because maybe they ground the wheat today, and also it was needed today, so that's nothing. So he says, why? Because since originally, right, when it was just uh, some raw, you know, wheat, it was still fitting, right, to eat that raw. So it's in a case like that, uh, it's considered to be something uh, new, right? If they ground it today. But he says, this rabbi was lenient about this, practically speaking. But he says, when it comes to uh, two days of Rosh Hashanah, uh, so there he says my rabbi told me that some are stringent about that so he says why because sometimes the uh, right the harvest is prolonged and goes until Rosh Hashanah so therefore they can still harvest it right on Rosh Hashanah itself and then bake it on the second day of Yom Tov, right? So it says it's proper to be stringent when it comes to two days of Yom Tov, right? But as we said, like today, obviously, this will not apply, you know, because uh, you know we we're not using fresh, uh, freshly ground, uh, right, the flour today. You know, we're using from, from from the counter, right? So not relevant, really. We're not uh, harvesting right uh, uh, freshly, you know, fresh wheat for baking. Uh, nobody does that. Okay, so that's the story there. So then he goes on. Uvagot Maimon says that this rabbi says katuv asuri rabenu tam likach pat minagoy. So Ri and rabenu tam forbade to buy uh, bread from a goy. Yom tov and yom tov. And I'm ken hava hava unless we know. Unless we know that the flour was sifted, right, before Yom Tov. So it says the reason is because, you know, things which are, you know, food, foodstuffs, we decree that if you allow, right, uh, the bread of Goim, so then the Jew will come to, right, uh, sift out the flour on Yom Tov. So it's in a place where there's concern that the wood, right, uh, that he baked with, uh, he picked it, right, Hayom, he detached it Hayom from the tree, today from the tree, so you have to also be careful about that. So what does that mean? You've got to make sure that this was not, right, uh, detached today from the tree. So he says the, the, the Ram, right, he accustomed the people in his town to seal up, right, the flower before Yom Tov. So what does that mean? You put a seal on it, right, this way they can't put in some other stuff there, you know? It's like locked up. Or to close in the room. It says, And the keys will be in the hands of a Jew. So if he wants to buy a flour or pot or bread, that was baked today, So it says, This rabbi also, He writes in his perk, That these two rabbis forbade, That then they they told people right not to buy bread from the goyim, right? Not to mean bakers, goyish bakers, beyom tov. Im lo she odea she akem achaya nitchan me'erev yom tov. Unless you know that the flour was ground before yom tov. They had seen nilkatu me'erev yom tov. Also the trees right were detached before. Very bar baruch. So he says this rabbi, uh, 
והרש, this rabbi, התירו לקנות פת שאפה גוי. They allowed to buy bread, which is baked by goy, בשבת על שבת, בשעת הדחק, right? In a pressing situation. <laughs> okay, there you go. So why is it allowed, right, to, to buy the bread from the goy? As we said, right, because he didn't bake it for you. If he baked it for you, that would be a problem. You cannot tell Goy to bake bread for you on, on, on Shabbat. But if he baked it, you know, for just, a, you know, the community at large, you know what I mean? So then it's okay. Okay, good. So then it goes on, right? Katav Agur says the Agur, im Yom Tov Chal Achara Shabbat, if Yom Tov falls after Shabbat, Pach and Efa Shabbat Asu Yom Tov. So he says then, the bread that was baked on Shabbat is going to be forbidden Yom Tov, Mishum Lachana, because of preparation. Umari Molin Hodag Ledivre Anum Yaakov. So he says, this rabbi also admitted, right, that that was the case. He also agreed with that. Vish, Lamar, Vish, Dakshot. Okay. Ad Ganesh Anon. Ve'en Ora Azo Nechona. Uh, so says Bet Yosef, right? This psak is not correct. He says, right? This ruling, not correct. Why? Because we all explain, right? In laws of Shabbat, that right? The Rosh and others, you know, other big rabbis, right? Permit permitted this even on Shabbat, right? So all the more so it's going to be allowed the next day, which is Yom Tov. So therefore, right, uh, so what are we talking about here? We're talking about bread that was baked by a goy on Shabbat, right? And it wasn't for you, right? It was just, you know, he's a, he's a baker, you know? So he bakes some bread, you know, he wants to sell it, right? That's okay. So therefore, what do you see, right? You see from there that, you know, if you're lacking some bread, right? Let's say you forgot to buy some halot, right? So you can just go to the store, you know, and pick up some halot, you know, and uh, you pay the goy tomorrow, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's not really a problem. Even if it was baked today. As we said, right, you won't pay him, you won't mention a price, right? You're not going to mention the weight, you know, and measures and all kinds of things, right? Just pick up the loaf and go, right? That's, <laughs> no, <laughs> don't talk too much. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Okay. Of course, you have to get his permission, right? Otherwise, you're stealing. You know, that's, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> okay. He has to know you're taking it. Okay. All right, good. So it goes on. Um, So he says, this rabbi, Katav, Svat Rabbeinu Tam, he wrote the opinion of Rabbeinu Tam, Svat Rabbeinu Rosh, and also the Rosh, right? Machloket, right? Between them, regarding the bread. So he says, if there are some, you know, he says, there are some Jews who mistakenly are allow, right, to take the bread from the Goy on Shabbat, and also to mention a price, you know what I mean? That's no good. Right? Or oh, Bet right? And he, he mentions the price, you know. Like, give me uh, two dollars of bread. Who allowed you to do that, right? That's not allowed to do that. And they says they even call the goy right in his house, you know, right? from the window, right? The, you know, ah, <laughs> and they give him the money. Uh, Rawi Leostro says that we cannot forbid, right? And we cannot permit that, right? That's what we're saying, right? That's not allowed. When you're mentioning the price and you know this kind of stuff, it's already you you've you've uh, right uh, crossed the red line there. Okay. <laughs> so it says uh, you shouldn't eat bread which was baked on Shabbat, kacha, right? In a, this such a manner, nearly. That's what it seems to me. Okay, very good. So that's the uh, Bet Yosef, right? Okay, a little bit long there. Okay, long in the tooth. So let's see the Shulchan Ruch, and we're done. I'm going to let you guys go. All right, here we go. So yeah, we're going to have to pull that up because um, we're starting a new chapter.
So let's see which chapter we have here. Right. So we're talking about Tough Kuv Yud Zayn. Tough Kuv Yud Zayn. This one will erase, delete, and we'll go to Tough Kuv Yud Zayn. Okay. There you go. So says Shukhan Ruch here. לומר לכן ואני לתת לו ביצים או אגוזים או שאר מיני מקל משתה דינו ביום טוב כמו בשבת. Right, so he says the same that applies on Shabbat applies on Yom Tov. So what does that mean? If you want to purchase some items, right, because you need them for, for Shabbat or Yom Tov, whatever it is, right, same thing. כמו שנתבר לאל סימן שין חב גימל. Like it says in chapter 323, if you want to look over there, right, and see what it says there. Uh, so it says, if he's the goy, right, this merchant, so then there are some limitations, right? Don't buy something which is attached to the ground. Right? As we said, today it's not so common like that. Right? Or it's lacking trapping, right? Something like that. Unless you know, right, that they were not trapped today they were not right uh, picked today so then it's okay you know as you said right when you go to the as we said when you go to the super today these things are not from today right obviously you know no you don't have to be a big uh, rocket scientist to know that okay so it's also it says don't take eggs right because they have been, may have been laid today right as we said again right in our times not so much like that Shimon will do uh because maybe they were late today. But it says something which doesn't have the issue of the you know these issues, right? Trapping, picking, right? Uh, things like this, right? Laying today. Uh, so then you're allowed to take it from the goy, right? No problem. Right? Even if it was brought from outside the boundary. Why is it allowed if he brought it from outside the boundary? Right? Uh, because we said he didn't bring it for you, right? That's the thing. Otherwise, you'll be forbidden. Also, it says, right, flour which was ground today, right, in a town where, you know, it's mostly green there, right? So I think all of us, you know, live in towns where it's mostly green, right? Uh, nobody, even in even New York, it's mostly green, you know? So... <laughs> All the more so your towns, right? Uh, they're mostly going there. <laughs> so that's for sure. Uh, okay, so... Um, so if that's the case, it's mostly going, right? Uh, Why is that? Because he, when he ground that, uh, that, uh, that wheat, right? He didn't do it for the Jews. He did it for the, you know... Right, the, the you know community at large, which is mostly goyim, right? Uh, okay. Uh, so it's also you can buy from him bread which was baked today. Can you imagine fresh bread? Nice, right? Oh, mishum nolad, right? Again, right? He didn't bake it for you. That's something else. I'm not talking about that. But on Yom Tov, you know, even if he baked it for you, it wouldn't be really a problem because you're allowed to bake on Yom Tov, you know, so that's okay. But we're talking about on Shabbat, right? Obviously then, then it'll be a problem. Uh, okay. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. So the Ramah, somebody puts in here in the parentheses, 
He says, same thing applies also if it was baked on a Shabbat before. In other words, seven days ago, right? Okay, well, that's pretty clear. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, you know what it is? He's not talking about seven days ago. He's talking about the Shabbat that came before Yom Tov. So it's like, you know, juxtaposed, right? One to the other. Seven days is a little bit too long. Okay, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Erase that, right? Uh, right. Uh, okay. So, okay, that's pretty much the story. If you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I will let you go. And, uh, right, let my people go, as they say, right? Let my people go. I'll see you tomorrow, Brother Hashem. Be blessed with wealth and health and happiness. Chazak Baruch, Laila Tov. Right? Uh, and, uh, right, uh, yeah, Baruch Hashem. We had a good deal, you know, this weekend, you know. Trump we kept, but that, you know, that deaf, right, the deaf, you know, deaf guy, right, deaf. Deaf, dumb, and blind, he got killed. They, they killed him. He was a big terrorist guy, right? So Did they find we, his body? Uh, not yet, but I think he's he's gone, right? He's <laughs> he's in he's in Arabic heaven. You know what that is, right? He's in a harem, you know, somewhere, right? Whatever, right? I'm joking, right? Okay, that's that's their that's their that's their heaven, right? You know, that's their religion, right? Pretty silly there. Okay, whatever. <laughs> All right, so we'll see you tomorrow, Rosh Hashem. Laila Tov. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you so much. Right, God bless. God bless.